you weren't supposed to see this coming. Nobody was. Not Washington, not Brussels, not even Amsterdam itself. But now, the unexpected has happened, and it's sending shockwaves through the global tech world. The Netherlands, long known as one of America's most dependable allies, has just taken a step that could shake the foundation of the global semiconductor industry. And here's the kicker. They're not backing down. Just one decision, just a single move, was all it took to throw a wrench into America's carefully constructed tech war. And now, the fallout is spreading faster than anyone could have predicted. The truth is, no one was prepared for this. Not the policymakers in Washington, not the strategists in Europe, and certainly not the CEOs in Silicon Valley. The Netherlands, under immense pressure from the United States, has made a surprising move. ASML, the Dutch tech powerhouse that controls nearly 90% of the world's lithography machine market, was widely expected to fall in line with the U.S. government's export restrictions targeting China's semiconductor ambitions. Instead, Reuters reports something very different. ASML is still shipping deep ultraviolet lithography machines, the backbone of chip production, to Chinese tech companies. This is happening despite direct pressure from Washington to cut China off. This single act of resistance undermines the entire U.S. strategy to slow China's advancement in the semiconductor industry. And it's raising a serious question across global markets. Is the Netherlands carving out its own tech policy, or is this a dangerous game of economic brinkmanship? Let's rewind for a second. Peter Wenink, the former CEO of ASML, once issued a warning that's echoing loudly now. He said that if the West tried to completely isolate China, it would only speed up Beijing's ability to develop its own advanced chip-making technology. And right now, that warning seems eerily accurate. Take this, China's leading semiconductor company, SMIC, recently accomplished something the West didn't expect. Despite US sanctions, they produced a 7 nanometer chip, a huge leap in chip technology. The Wall Street Journal didn't mince words. They called it a wake-up call for the Western world and its belief in unchallenged tech dominance. So now, the big question becomes, if ASML continues to send DUV machines to China, is it protecting its leadership in the market? Or is it unknowingly helping China build the tools to overtake it? Now here's where things get even more serious. Forget oil, forget rare earth minerals, even forget artificial intelligence for a moment. ASML's extreme ultraviolet machines are the crown jewels of modern chip production. Each of these machines costs over $380 million and is absolutely essential for making the world's most cutting-edge semiconductors. Without access to EUV machines, China falls several generations behind tech leaders like the US, South Korea, and Taiwan, and that's why the Biden administration, using the CHIPS Act, leaned heavily on the Dutch government to block the sale of these EUV machines to China completely. But there's a twist. While ASML has held back EUV exports, it still dominates the market for deep ultraviolet lithography machines. These machines may be a step behind, but they're still essential for producing billions of chips used in everyday tech. Now Washington wants to block those machines too. But here's the problem, the Dutch aren't playing along. Why? Look at the numbers. In 2023 alone, China made up 46% of ASML's total revenue. That's over $7 billion. Cutting off that market wouldn't just be a minor setback. It would slash revenue, rattle shareholders, and create a power vacuum that Chinese state-backed competitors would be more than happy to fill. So if ASML gives in to Washington's demands, is it protecting democracy or digging its own grave? From the outside, it might look like the Netherlands is being rebellious. But take a closer look and it becomes clear this is about economic survival. Dutch officials aren't just dealing with political pressure from Washington. They're also weighing the massive economic consequences of offending China. ASML is more than a company. It's a symbol of Dutch innovation, and the Dutch government heavily subsidizes it. Letting a foreign government, even an ally, dictate its trade policy could set a dangerous precedent. It risks turning the Netherlands into a puppet state, economically dependent on American interests. And then there's the looming threat of retaliation. China has already hinted at serious consequences if the Dutch government follows through with more export bans. According to Nikkei Asia, Beijing is stockpiling ASML machines, boosting domestic chip-making equipment production, and investing a mind-blowing $143 billion into building its own semiconductor ecosystem. They're preparing for the long game, and they're not bluffing. So the Dutch government now faces a critical question. 
if they bow to U.S. demands today, will they even have a Chinese market left five years from now? Here's what Washington believes, that without access to ASML machines, China can't manufacture high-end chips. But that idea, it's already being tested. A new report by the Semiconductor Industry Association reveals that in 2023, China increased its production of advanced chips by 70% over the previous year. That's despite every sanction and restriction thrown its way. In reality, the Netherlands' refusal to completely align with U.S. policy could be doing the opposite of what Washington intended. It might be pushing China to innovate faster and to become entirely independent in the semiconductor space. And big names like Intel, NVIDIA, and Qualcomm? They're watching this unfold very, very closely because U.S. chip restrictions haven't killed demand in China. They've just reshaped the supply chain. Bloomberg reports that while the U.S. banned chip sales to companies like Huawei, Chinese buyers have simply gone around the rules, using subsidiaries, shell companies, and friendly third parties to get what they need. So let's ask the uncomfortable question. If ASML keeps selling DUV machines and China keeps finding ways to buy advanced chips, is the U.S. strategy actually speeding up Chinese independence? Every time the U.S. tightens export controls, Beijing responds not by retreating, but by doubling down on self-reliance. And in this semiconductor war, that might be the move that turns the tide. Huawei's Mate 60 Pro, featuring a highly advanced 7-nanometer processor, sent shockwaves through the tech world. Why? Because under the current U.S.-led export restrictions, this kind of innovation was believed to be impossible for China. At least not yet. But Huawei proved otherwise. And now, it's clear that this breakthrough was only the beginning. China isn't just content with surprising the world. It's preparing to scale its semiconductor capabilities even further and faster. According to reports from Keen Global, the Chinese government's state-backed chip investment fund has just injected a staggering $45 billion into two major players, SMIC, or Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, and Yangtze Memory Technologies, also known as YMTC. This isn't a small move. It's a powerful signal that China is doubling down on chip development. Dutch semiconductor analyst Bert van der Vee has warned that every day ASML continues selling to China, it accelerates China's own chip-making abilities. And here's the dilemma. If the Netherlands is allowing ASML to keep trading with China for short-term economic gain, could it be helping Beijing develop the very same technology that may one day render ASML obsolete? This concern cuts to the heart of a much deeper issue. The European Union has long struggled to present a united front on trade and technology policy, especially when it comes to balancing national interests against strategic alliances. The latest move by the Netherlands, choosing economic pragmatism over geopolitical pressure, has only widened these internal cracks. France and Germany have publicly thrown their weight behind the United States' push to restrict chip exports to China. On the surface, it looks like a united front. But privately, many European leaders are beginning to feel frustrated and even betrayed. Why the change in attitude? Because while European firms are expected to follow the rules strictly, major American companies like Intel and AMD are still receiving exemptions, special permissions that allow them to continue doing business with Chinese tech firms. This double standard hasn't gone unnoticed. Now, a critical question is circulating among EU policymakers. If the United States is focused on protecting its own economic interests first, why should Europe sacrifice its own industries to follow along blindly? According to the Financial Times, top European chipmakers like ST Microelectronics and Infineon Technologies have been lobbying quietly behind the scenes. They're urging the EU to reconsider going all in on a full export ban. Their concern is simple. Completely cutting off trade with China could damage Europe's already fragile semiconductor sector. So, what happens if the Netherlands' stance sparks a broader European rebellion against Washington's trade pressure? The conversation would shift from being about one company, ASML, to something much bigger. Whether the Western alliance is breaking apart over economic self-interest. Right now, China already dominates global battery production. It controls over 77% of the market, a figure that gives it incredible leverage in the electric vehicle space. But even with this lead, China's major weakness remains high-performance semiconductors, the kind needed to power advanced EV systems and other high-tech applications. This is where ASML becomes crucial. 
The Dutch company is the only manufacturer in the world with the capability to produce extreme ultraviolet lithography machines. These machines are essential for making the most advanced chips, including those used in next-generation EVs. The United States, aware of how powerful this technology is, has imposed tough restrictions to block China from accessing EUV machines. But here's the catch. ASML is still allowed to export deep ultraviolet machines, which are slightly older but still extremely powerful. And that loophole has given Chinese firms like SMIC and YMTC an opening to push ahead with domestic alternatives. Bloomberg now reports that China's EV industry has become the fastest growing in the world. Domestic sales are expected to surpass 10 million units in 2024, a figure that's already putting serious pressure on Western car makers like Tesla, Volkswagen, and General Motors. If China succeeds in closing its semiconductor gap, it won't just dominate battery production, it could seize control over the entire EV supply chain. That would leave Western automakers dangerously dependent on Chinese technology for years to come. Washington had hoped that its allies would fall in line, especially when it came to cutting off high-tech exports to China. But ASML's continued shipments, along with China's aggressive push for tech independence, suggest something else is happening a growing defiance within global trade networks. According to the U.S. Bureau of Industry and Security, China increased its domestic semiconductor output by 38% in 2023, a pace that far exceeded expert predictions. SMIC, which was once deeply dependent on foreign partners, has now managed to produce a 7 nanometer chip using only DUV machines. That kind of innovation was previously believed to be out of reach under current sanctions. ASML's decision to keep selling older lithography machines despite tighter export rules has done more than just help China. It's also emboldened other nations like South Korea and Japan. Their chip makers are now pressuring their own governments to ease restrictions, fearing they might fall behind if China continues developing alternatives. Nikkei Asia recently reported that South Korea's chip exports to China soared by 41% in early 2024. That's not a fluke. It's a sign that the global semiconductor industry may already be undergoing a realignment, one that challenges the U.S.-led trade order. Despite immense political pressure from Washington, China remains ASML's second largest market. In 2023 alone, China accounted for 46% of ASML's total revenue, amounting to more than $7 billion, according to Reuters. Cutting China off entirely wouldn't just hurt China, it would create a massive hole in ASML's earnings, one that Europe's struggling chip industry can't fill anytime soon. Analysts at ING Bank estimate that if ASML were to fully comply with U.S. demands, its revenue could drop by as much as 20% over the next two years. That kind of hit could lead to mass layoffs, halted expansion plans, and major cuts in investment. The Dutch government knows this risk well. ASML is seen not just as a company, but as a strategic national asset. That's why the Netherlands has been hesitant to go along with a full export ban, unless there are major trade agreements in place to cushion the economic blow. And that's where the future hangs in the balance between geopolitical loyalty and economic survival. If China succeeds in building its own lithography technology, ASML won't just lose billions in future sales. It could lose the very foundation of its global dominance. That's the high-stakes reality facing one of Europe's most advanced tech companies today. And it brings up a critical question. Is ASML simply trying to buy time with China? Or is it playing a dangerous game that could lead to long-term irrelevance? What's happening here isn't just a technological dispute. It's a full-blown economic standoff between three of the world's most powerful players, China, the United States, and the European Union. And, you know, the implications stretch far beyond chip machines. According to the Financial Times, China has recently introduced strict export controls on gallium and germanium, which are two vital raw materials used in producing advanced semiconductors. This move wasn't random. It was a targeted retaliation against increasingly aggressive trade restrictions from the West. In response, the United States government is ramping up its own defenses. Washington is preparing to roll out an additional $39 billion in subsidies as part of its Chips and Science Act. The goal? to boost domestic chip manufacturing and reduce America's dependence on foreign tech, especially from China. 
Not wanting to fall behind, the European Union is fast-tracking its own semiconductor strategy, launching a $47 billion European Chips Act. This isn't just about boosting industry, it's about economic survival in a world that's quickly fracturing into competing tech blocks. All of this points to a much deeper issue. The ASML conflict isn't just about chip equipment, it's about a global power shift in real time. If the trade war intensifies, we may soon see governments restrict more key tech exports, move aggressively to reclaim domestic control over supply chains, and even force companies to choose sides between East and West. Here's where things get even more serious for ASML. If the company continues supplying advanced lithography tools, especially EUV machines, to China, United States trade officials could retaliate by targeting European firms. This could involve secondary sanctions, similar to those previously imposed on global suppliers to Huawei. In effect, Washington could pressure European businesses to fall in line with its broader anti-China strategy. But China isn't sitting idle. In fact, it's moving fast. Through its state-backed semiconductor fund, often called Big Fund 2, China has committed a staggering $45 billion to developing homegrown lithography capabilities. Industry reports, including from Kin Global, suggest that China could produce working lithography prototypes as soon as 2026. If these efforts bear fruit, the ripple effects would be massive. TSMC in Taiwan and Samsung in South Korea, both of which rely heavily on ASML machines, could lose their competitive edge. And if China no longer depends on foreign technology to manufacture advanced chips, it would gain unprecedented control over the tech industry's future. Meanwhile, in Europe, chip makers like Infineon and ST Microelectronics are starting to feel caught in the middle. As United States sanctions widen, executives within these companies are reportedly calling for greater trade independence. Behind closed doors, they've been urging European Union officials to push back against United States dominance and avoid being pulled into another nation's economic war. All of this suggests something much bigger is unfolding, the fragmentation of the global semiconductor ecosystem into two parallel worlds, one led by China, the other controlled by the United States and its Western allies. For decades, Europe has tried to stay neutral, playing the role of a balanced economic partner. But ASML's position and the growing United States pressure could force a break with that legacy. The United States had assumed the Netherlands would cooperate without resistance. But recent moves from The Hague suggest a growing reluctance to automatically align with Washington's trade demands. At the same time, China is carefully using the ASML situation to exploit cracks in the Western alliance. By applying economic pressure at just the right points, Beijing is testing how long Western unity can truly hold. If any country breaks rank, the balance of power could shift dramatically. And if China succeeds in developing a full replacement for ASML's lithography systems within the next decade, it wouldn't just be a tech victory. It would signal a major geopolitical transformation. The Netherlands may believe it's making the best decision for now, but that decision could shape the next 50 years of global trade and diplomacy. Should ASML fall behind, this could go down as the historic moment when the West lost its edge in the race for technological supremacy, a moment when China not only caught up but took the lead. But don't think this was the final battle in the chip war, not even close. Because something even more shocking is unfolding right now. A new contender has entered the arena, one that neither China nor the United States saw coming. We'll break that down in the next video. But before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss a critical update in this global tech showdown.